Hey guys, Ivan here and we have a couple of very interesting topics for this video, but we are starting with a little review of Yamamoto Italy Pro Show and this was your top 5, as you can see from left to right you had Roman Fritz, Mohamed El Amam, you also had Vlad Suharuchko who won this show, Andrea Muzi and at the end over there to the right the giant Jamie Johal. So this was your top 5, I think this is like the top names in this show, definitely the most popular guys and maybe some of the other guys out of top 5 could have been uh, placed higher but I think the names really won this show because the other guys are really not, I wouldn't say well known, they're not known at all and these guys are pretty popular, all of them. So Suharuchko won, Vlad won, I wasn't expecting this, I thought he was gonna be second, in my prediction video I had Andrea Muzi winning but Andrea Muzi actually ended up in third, not even in second. We have some other photos and videos, as you can see right here, to me personally, Jamie Johal is really the odd man out, he really stands out here, but he stands out a little bit too much, and the reason why he didn't place higher than he did, and he actually beat Roman Fritz, but why he didn't place higher than fourth, well first of all the other three guys are really like top bodybuilders, so Mohamed El Amam, uh, Andrea Muzi and Vlad Suharuchko, it's really hard to beat them if you have gaps in your physique like Jamie Johal does, for example his legs, his legs could definitely be bigger, rounder, that inner part is definitely lacking some mass, uh, his legs could be fuller, rounder, bigger, as you can see the other guys have that advantage over Jamie, which is expected from a, from a really tall guy like that, if he ever fills out his frame completely, he's going to be pretty much unstoppable, but as for now, he still has a lot of gaps, he did improve significantly, I gotta say, he's definitely much better than he was last year at the British Grand Prix, so he definitely changed a lot, he looks awesome, his conditioning is improved, he's bigger, but there are still gaps to be filled, for example, uh, that, that space, free space between his lats and his arms could be filled out more, also like the, 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 the size, the sheer size, the mass in his arms and shoulders, so there's definitely more muscle to be added on this frame, but for a super tall guy like him, he definitely brought it to this stage, and he, he looked great, and he did great, he was fourth. Roman Fritz finally cracked a top 5 at a show, I gotta say, this looks like it was his best edition this season, this year, I'm not sure if it is only the lighting, because the lighting did look really good at this show, or is he actually fuller, bigger, better, because he did look much better here, improved, he definitely looked fuller, rounder, and he actually cracked that top 5, and I think he deserved it. I don't think he was there because of his name, I think if he was the way he was in those previous shows, they would have placed him lower, but I think he deserved that the top 5 position, he was peeled to the bone, but also he looked bigger and fuller, especially through the back, but in the other poses as well, his posing though is horrible, it's horrific, he definitely needs to work on his presentation, look at this, what he's doing with his arms like that, I don't know, I mean, this guy is a horrible, horrible poser, I don't think he cares about posing much, but like this is really bad, he needs to learn how to pose. Back to that top 5, now as you can see right here, Jamie Johal was in the middle of this lineup for some reason, and maybe some of us assumed that he's gonna win the show, but no, he's not on that level yet, he's not a pro show winner, not yet, and it's not because of his height, it's because he still lacks uh, some body parts, I mean he lacks some muscle to round up his physique, which is of course normal, considering how tall he is, it's gonna take him a little while longer. As far as the other guys, as you can see, Vlad was really posing strangely, I hope it was just a bad moment to take a photo, Andrea Muzi, why he didn't place higher, why he didn't win this show, I think he's just washed up, he did so many shows this year, he really wanted that Mr. Olympia qualification, he tried a little bit too hard, I think he pushed his health to its absolute limit, like it's gonna be a freaking miracle if this guy survives this year, because I mean doing that many shows, I don't know if you guys compete or not, but I'm sure most of you don't compete at this level, at the elite level, and I don't compete at that level either, but I do compete, so I know when you compete what you need to do to be your best absolute version, but to be, to try to win shows, pro shows, to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, I have no idea what he's putting his body through, but I'm sure it is a lot, so he definitely tortured himself this season, 
and I think it's enough. He has so many runner-up positions, third place finishes like this one, and this time around he wasn't even second, he was third, so he's kind of far away from winning a pro show, it's not gonna happen this year, it seems like it, I think he should just wrap this season and improve for next year and do it next year, I think it's over, I think he should stop before he seriously hurts himself. And this is the first time we saw Mohamed Alamam after he had that injury, I think he had a car accident last year and he was like off from the gym a long time, he, he lost a lot of gains, but he got back to it and right now he looks amazing, he looks probably better than ever honestly. From the back it was a little bit different situation than it was from the front, as you can see Roman Fritz had definitely the most conditioned glutes, his glutes were absolutely peeled, hamstrings too, Jamie Joha looked great from the back, especially in the back lat spread, very comparable to Vlad Suharuchko, but apparently as you can see Vlad was uh, far superior, the other two guys in the top 3, Andrea Muzi and Mohamed Lamam didn't really look that good from behind the conditioning, you could see the conditioning could have been better, uh, I don't know if they were just watery or not really, they didn't diet enough, I don't know, but uh, the hardest is obviously Roman and then the best combination of hardness and like completeness, fullness and everything like that would be Vlad Zuharuchko, though Jamie looked amazing too, so I think Vlad definitely deserved to win this show, he looked the best here, he looked amazing I gotta say, here in these higher quality photos I got a couple of them, you can see all the detail, everything, like you can see the quads, he has crazy quads, we all know that, but his abs are really prominent, and he definitely brought the best conditioning ever, is there something weird happening in those lads there, huh, I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. Do you see anything weird here in the lats? Well, no, not really, I mean his lats looked fine, in some angles you could have seen some scar tissue I guess it is, but overall he looked great, compared to his Portugal Pro version where it was so obvious that something was wrong with his delts and lats, he was probably injecting gear in, in lats and shoulders, look at here, look at the lats, they're definitely, something is definitely off with them, look at the shoulders, look at it, look at the lat here, check it out in a slow motion, look at the shoulder here, yeah, look at the lat, he was definitely putting something in those areas and it wasn't simple because he got rid of whatever it was, he obviously stopped pinning his shoulders and lats and it was a significant improvement, there was nothing weird, the judges didn't notice anything because nothing was there, maybe there was a little bit of scar tissue, you can still see it in some poses, but I mean not really, not like it was at Romania Pro, so he definitely improved that, he came in in better conditioning than Romania Pro and he deserved this victory and he's going to the Mr. Olympia and he definitely belongs up there with the very best. If you guys are looking for a high quality BCAA product, I will suggest to you Old School Labs Classic BCAA, it tastes great, this watermelon flavor is amazing, but if you guys don't like it, you can actually return it back and get all of your money back, and if you guys want to show me some extra support, the link is down below, and if you use the code EVAN, you get a 15% discount, and it really helps me, it helps this channel. Alright, next we get a physique update of Urs Kaletsinski, who just did a guest posing, and we can see clearly what his physique looks like right now at this point in time, and we can see if he improved any body parts, what body parts did he really need to improve, it was obviously his arms. It was always his arms, he never really had great biceps or triceps, as far as the rest of his physique he was pretty good, like he had great legs, uh, not just the quads but also hamstrings and glutes, calves are insane, chest is pretty good, back is also decent, but arms never really a strong point for Urs, however now it looks like he improved them significantly, you're gonna see it in a second when he does the front double bicep, look at it right now when he does that, look, look obviously a much bigger difference, much bigger difference. How did he grow his arms this much? Of course by using Sintel, just joking, just joking, I have a lot of people in the comment section who are sensitive to Sintel comments, I'm just trying to trigger them a little to comment down below, anyways if you take a look at this physique right here, you can see that it really doesn't have that many gaps, before he definitely had weaker arms, but now they pretty much look up to par, they definitely look pretty symmetrical compared to the rest of his physique, his biceps are bigger, they are peakier, they are just more massive, and the triceps are definitely hanging lower, now again this guy is a youngster, he's 20, 24, he's turning 24 this year, 
and he grew this much he's already doing classic physique and he's basically at the top of the weight cap and he's at the mr olympia level already so you can be sure this guy is a genetic monster not anybody can be this big at this age i mean we talked about brandon harding quite a lot lately and that guy is a couple of years older than nurse and look at him he has like 30 pounds to go before he reaches his weight cap and nurse is already there so he definitely has crazy growth genetics and he he doesn't have like horrible insertions in his arms like for example chris bumstead his insertions are fine it was simply the matter of putting on enough mass over time and i'm sure proper training is the reason why his arms grew this much i watch his youtube channel he was training uh, arms with his coach and his coach was really strict about uh, doing specific exercises performing them in a specific way in a proper way in the right way and i think that's why he managed to improve them this much because right now honestly these arms look really good i wish i had arms like this for sure as far as his conditioning his conditioning is phenomenal for 14 weeks out of mr olympia he's going to be peeled he's probably going to bring his best conditioning ever because last time he was peeled but they did something wrong as far as the peak week and he was flat at the stage i think they will change that Look at his arms right now, again, here, take a look at this. Do these arms look bad to you? Does he have weak arms still? Could they be bigger? Sure, it would be nice if he had even bigger bicep peaks, for example. But are they improved? Hell yeah, hell yeah, they're improved. And I gotta say, this is very motivating, seeing somebody actually improve their arms. Arms, they're not like legs. A lot of people don't have legs, and that's because they don't train them hard enough. Anybody can train legs harder. But training arms is easy, it's not like legs. You can't just improve volume, intensity, or whatever, frequency, and expect your arms to become huge all of a sudden. You gotta do something else. And I think that something else is you gotta learn how to train them properly. And I'm pretty sure Urs did exactly that. And also, combined with his crazy genetics, he improved his arms and that significantly improved his physique. And previously I had Ramon beating Urs in the Mr. Olympia, but now after seeing this physique, I'm not so sure about that. I might have Urs potentially in top 2 or top 3. Whatever you guys think, don't tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, we also got William Bonek with his physique update. 14 weeks out of Mr. Olympia and he looks really lean, really hard. He looks really impressive at this point. And I'm pretty sure we can expect Arnold Classic version of William Bonek at the Mr. Olympia this year only without a gyno. If he had his gyno fixed for the Arnold, he would have beaten Brandon Curry. No, no question about it. Everybody, everybody who was there or who was watching a live stream had William winning that show clearly. The reason why he lost it was because he had gyno, which he had fixed after the Arnold Classic. And as you can see right here, he has no gyno and he looks amazing. His conditioning is great for 14 weeks out. And again, I am expecting him to bring something similar to what he brought to the Arnold Classic and Boston Pro that he won this year, which is definitely a far better version than the one he brought to the Mr. Olympia last year when he placed 6th. I don't think William Bonac is the 6th best bodybuilder in the world. I think he deserves to be in top 4 at least. At least. And Brandon Curry was 2nd last year. After that, the Arnold Classic, William Bonac killed him. So if Bonac brings what he brought to the Arnold Classic, or even improves it, where is the limit? Can he win the Mr. Olympia? I'm really curious to see that, but at this point, at 14 weeks out, his conditioning is great, and I'm really expecting this guy to bring something special to the Mr. Olympia, and to have his redemption against those two guys, those two youngsters who have beaten him last year, Hunter and Nick. Whatever you guys think, though, where William Bonac will place, tell me down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys, please. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.